So Nate says, Sunny June, book two by Blue Bastard. Thursday AM. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. Octavia slowly found herself waking up in unfamiliar surroundings. This is not alarm her. It wasn't her normal sleeping arrangement back in her cozy apartment that she spent the past few days living in. Rather, it was one of the two bedrooms in the house that her friend, like her heartstrings, was renting alongside Lyra's roommate, Sandalwood. Presley had been Bon Bon, but the confectioner had gotten married to her cold friend year over a year ago. Ah, <laughs> cannon. Lyra had some point else to burn with half the rent for residence. Fine Green Pony had to admit it had been serviceable enough abode. Nothing like you in the cheapest housing in the Crestrani capital. But then again, a month's rent for a house at Carroll, I'd probably pay for six months' rent here. There's certainly less than what the pony of Lyra's talent deserves. Latavia, yawning and gradually dragging her form out of bed. A former, former Cattle Royal Sympathy member, she could have done a lot worse for herself. Plus, if she's happy here, who am I to judge? So well, it could be an avalanche of books falling off a bookshelf, suddenly echoed through the walls. Writing Artemia, why her liar friend was a former member of the symphony in the first place. Sure enough, a short walk down the hall was slightly ajar. Artemia found a mint unicorn dragging herself out of a layer of parchment, ink, and glue bindings. Oh, uh, morning, Octi! Green Lyra, a warm smile on her muzzle as if being buried alive by books was a normal occurrence. In fact, it probably was a normal occurrence. So I tell you know the majority of books on the floor were somewhat beaten up, so you just spent as much time on the ground level as they did in their proper sales places. Morning, Nina. Oh, I trust you're okay. Rarely as I tell you. Yeah, sorry the books falling woke you up. The shelf isn't evenly balanced. Give it the house, you see. Yeah, the key for getting to have a carpenter look at it. She looked at it again and gave Artemia a wide smile. Probably doesn't help that those shelves are a little overloaded anyway. I really had to prioritize my books again. Indeed, it seems you really need a hot with that. Lara's smile dropped as, as she did, as did her ears. Come on, Octi. I get enough shit about this from police who aren't my friends. Not about you know, I'm only slightly ripping you about this human obsession of yours. But then I do think it's odd for a pony to be so infested with some mythological species. But Celestia knows I have the strangest ponies for friends. I'm still convinced that werewolves actually existed. Midnight Moon does thinks her roommate is a vampire. And then there's you and your modeling belief in your vault monkey creatures. Well, at least mine comes with documented evidence. I was holding up a book labeled Mysteries of Mankind, The Secret History of Pony Kind's Most Elusive Legend. This book was a result of years of research by Dr. Wild Goose Chase, a professor of pseudoscience. Can either of your friends say anything like that? I think the answer was to yawn. All more than I care to admit, she replied. Yuka rolled her eyes in response, while finally freeing herself from a printed word prison. Hey, at the very least, I'm not like other ponies I've heard of who think humans were evolutions from ponies, not monkeys, citing so absolutely unfounded things like Libyans being the answer. What of is a Libyan, exactly? Eventually, Libyans are sort of like minotaurs, only instead of being half bull and half whatever the other half is, Libyans are half ponies from the waist down. The female looked at Lyra as he just said Princess Celestia had been born of Pegasus, and had an ice cream cone glued to her forehead to become an alicorn. What is one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard of? Just saying there are ponies who believe that these Libyans, as you say they're called, are the middle point between ponies evolving into a monkey-based life form. I said that's what they think, Octi. Trust me, I'm the so-called conspiracy theorist here, and I think the ponies who believe that are crazy there's absolutely no evidence supporting your claims compared to the wealth of knowledge regarding human existence. The wealth of knowledge. I think you asked, so raised a curious eyebrow. The look on Lyra's face was an uncomfortable smile. Well, at least it's stuff that everybody knows is true, right? The Green Mare just shook her head. No one, no final says, this town is full of crazy ponies. 
Just the other day, I bumped into this one unicorn who was with Twilight. But when I tried to apologize to the mayor, she acted like she'd known me so intimately that she knew all my dark, deepest, darkest serious. Like, how you're a lesbian and madly in love with Vinyl, who's oblivious to your affections. Asked Lyra, a slight look on her face. Akimia was not amused. I'm gonna let that slide just by comeuppance, making that hard joke. Somehow she knew I had two cousins also named Octavia, and that she somehow she knew of the scar left over after. Well, you know, you said that awfully get well card I was recovering. You sure she wasn't a stalker type of pony? I told you about that time some pony was following Bonnie around, insisting she was a changeling. Thankfully, Twilight was able to talk some sense into that pony, but, well, I'm sure you get the idea. I would have not. So it's a pony house, no business hanging around the princess. So to be fair, she said I was actually like some, oh, what's that word she used? Some pony? Suggested Delilah. And her interest had increasingly in the pony that she had described. That was what was odd. She used some words that made no sense, like, uh, some body, yes, that was it. Some body she knew, not some pony. The pony she was describing also had the same hairstyle as me. Then she said people a lot, as if describing non specific group, instead of just putting it like a normal member of society. Oh yes, and then I heard enough. Blackly, of course. I overheard her use the word appendix, and the move in the same sentence. No, why would any party remove the reference part of a book is beyond... No, it wasn't part of a book, Arcti, interrupted Lyra, who had seemingly been triggered to hyperactive state. It was a body part! And all those words she used... Those were human turns! I got suddenly reached the hotel chin. Mel began to move as he soundlessly muttered something. What's she look like? She then asked. The unicorn. I think you looked at her friend queerly. Well, she kind of had a fiery mane. Lyra's response was to grab by Tevia and gasp for such an amount of time at that moment. Tevia thought she would collapse from oxygen deprivation. As it was, I think you wasn't that lucky. Now, Kitty Lyra ran over to the pile of books and dove in. Resurfacing with a book before the cellist could, found, could not make sense of a Kiyosaki remark. Lyra then proceeded to open the book and stuff it on Timmy's face. I think I know who that mare is! Lyra exclaimed, peeking over the top of the book. The grin was such a way it was a little unsettling. Backing out, she could have the luxury of both seeing what Lyra was trying to show her and, more importantly, breathe. Tevia looked at Lost Home's cover. The truth about Sunset Shimmer by someone named Tailspare. She then read the last place Lyra had said to you, which was the introduction. Sunset Shimmer, Badness, Westphania, was said to be the pride of the palace, the most important pony of her generation, and the youthful ward of our beloved Princess Celestia. However, one day something happened, which caused our younger noble to disappear, never to be heard from again. As for her position, she was supplanted by Celestia's former student, Princess Twilight Sparkle, who eventually became the Baron the Animal Magic and Princess of Friendship. Well, that leaves a huge question. What of Sunset Simmer? Some states she thought against the princess and escaped through a magical portal in palace. The official report indicates that after her father with Princess Celestia, she departed the palace. As she headed to the next to him, it was never seen again. I believe something different. That is possibly for her crimes, Princess Celestia as a former apprentice with a matter of redemption. I believe Sunset Simmer was sent to a different reality to serve as an explorer. I believe he was sent to the human world, as this book will explain how. A team looked at the picture on the same page. One of a younger image of the pony, in a fine dress with a caption underneath reading Sunset Shimmer, age 17, at the Grand Gallery Gala. Yes, that's her, all right. But why does it mention anything to do with humans? It doesn't! It's answered the excited mayor of Glee, but no pony else knows where she went after she escaped custody. There were rumors that she fled through a magic portal or something, though where she ended up could never be confirmed until now. That book even said so. Calmly, Octavia brought Huff up and lowered the book of Iris Grass. The book also says he went into an alternate dimension, which is impossible. You took the same theoretical physics class in the college I did, so you should know that. And yet, the breezes are confirmed to come from a known pocket dimension. Lyra Karen, the what? 
The Breeze, and you know what, never mind. Dropping the buck, the unicorn took on TV a golden aura of magic. The brought her closer to a rib crushing hug. Muscles pressed against one another. This is Hughes, Octavia. I gotta go find her immediately. There are so many questions about humans clo finally close to being answered. TV could only wonder at the horror so you potentially send motion. Could you repeat all that? Raspberry asked incredulously from her place behind the front desk of Travel's Retreat. So I sighed. <sighs> Look. I just need you to come out to Castle Everfree to help investigate the strange artifact we discovered there. Even you only asked me this, the object in question was the same magical nature as I am. I presume this thing is some kind of magical vault that needs to be resecured. Uh, no. Raz looked at the unicorn with a questioning expression. So then, do you mind telling me why there is something insanely dangerous that's been sitting unprotected in an unpatrolled ruin for now who knows how long? I learned for I like to laugh nervously. Actually, it's been slightly over a thousand years. We believe it was created by, well, not wanting to scare any patrons who might be listening in. Lavender and yet Holocorn, mostly to rescue the unicorn's horn. This looks like any normal cranial endowment. But of course, it was the real horn hidden behind the false disguise Twilight indicated. The one that indicated Raspberry's true lineage. However, Razzos frowned harder at the revelation that this object in the ruins had been something connected to her ancestor, for whom she had no love. How could it be something that belonged to him? Shouldn't somebody have detected its dark magic aura years ago? That's just it, Raz. It's not giving off any kind of dark magic aura. If it is, the emissions are somehow undetectable by any pony using conventional magic. However, given the decor on this thing, we're pretty certain he made it. So given that, you have all of his power at your hoe tips. Oh, I get it. You just want me to look at this thing. Raspberry sighed with exasperation. But you sure this isn't like the last ten or so things? You were sure contaminated dark magic. Absolutely. This isn't just a haunted mailbox or a possessed kitchen knife. This is a portal to another world. I just can fix it on the matter with steadfast. That was clear. But there's also a hint of fear. Raspberry had to wonder what the Alcorn wasn't telling her. Though, apart from her slightly suspected design appearance, that, that Sunset Simmer character had something to do with it. I hope, really hope this isn't so. It would be an evil portal that leads to a somber worshipping cult of Breezies or something. But I could probably get some exercise today. Since Nurse Reinhardt told me it would be good for my damaged leg muscles to be used as much as possible. Just tell me, just let me tell Ascar at Cashmere, I'm going out of Fed's healing. I'll meet you outside if you get going. In light of how her previous efforts of secretly observing Raspberry failed, Sunset opted instead to go and see if Twilight was available now. Of course, she wasn't, just like yesterday, but this time Sunset had spied Twilight walking alongside Raspberry Barrel before she even got into the library. She could feel herself growing irritated by how this dark reflection of herself, the one sighted for Twilight's dreams as the culprit for all the nightmares, was just openly hanging out with the pony version of her foster sister. Here I go again, I guess, thought Shimmer, once again doing her best to so inconspicuously stake out her prey. I don't know whether Princess Twilight is that warlock straw, just naive. I'll make her see I'm right, one way or another. Thankfully, Raz and Twilight were too busy in their conversation to feel as if they were being watched. So all Sarah had to do was blend into the crowd, keeping the pair in her sight at all times. But this rightly came to an end when Twilight and Raspberry proceeded to walk out of town to an open field and was the other end connected to Everfree Forest. Trying to remain conspicuous now would be difficult, since so this difficulty with invisibility spells had fast overnight. However, her priority changed just as fast as the weather above her head went from bright to sunny to a fierce downpour. The spectrum hued mare high hoofed, he offered green and gold feathered wing, Heliodor, tripping a response before flying out to rejoin his mistress. Rainbow, meanwhile, spied her tiger below. Within moments, it gathered a small cumulus. Using a cloud to cover her advance, 
Pegasus slowly stalked Sunset Simmer from above. Twi though Twilight told her friends that Sunset was reformed, Rainbow didn't buy it. Not even when Twilight had admitted she didn't know why Sunset was in Equestria once more. But clearly her intestines don't mean well for Raspberry, used Daz. Eyes narrow in suspicion. Sure, she hadn't exactly been nice to Raz for a long while following the exposure of her dark magic talents. Then especially after it turned out she was responsible for triggering a relapse. Applesax like it's rumpy. Eventually she came around to seeing Raz in a good light again. Safe for her role in solving the latest Harry problem. To that end, Dash felt like she owed a debt of gratitude to Raspberry for saving her adopted little sister. And so Nelpine was going to bring harm to Raz without first going through the element of loyalty first. Especially not like I still owe her a little payback for causing Twilight all that trouble over the element of magic. She asked Keen when, as Twilight and Raspberry were heading off to Everfree for whatever reason, since it made it obvious he intended to follow. Rainbow, in turn, decided to make it clear she intended otherwise. Then he attacked a small cloud, so he proceeded to jump up and down on it. Her innate Pegasus magic as it chained to water molecules. Inside the cloud, it turned the white, wispy contours into rolling crevasses of dark gray. The subspecies of result was an instant rainstorm on command that for one unfortunate unicorn happened to be right on top of her. What? cried out Sunset, trying to figure out where the rain was coming from. Well, obviously, it was coming from the cloud above, but what was it doing so well below the trumpets be where it belonged? And how could it spontaneously rain on this one spot while everywhere else was just as clear as day? Wait, clouds are only in the trumpets be back on Earth. Sunset recalled, they could be anywhere here on Equus, merely due to... Her confusion gradually turned to clarity, soon to morph into a boiling anger when she heard the tears and snorts of Rainbow Das. They already surged in her head at the incident where she stayed after school come to Rainbow's soccer practice, only because the Hispanic athlete had been asking her to come see her sweet moves repeatedly over the past week. Only too late had she realized the whole thing was a setup for Rainbow to dump an entire cooler gay ray from an infantist point onto the stands. Rainbow Dash! Shouted Sunset involuntarily, not actually knowing it was the mere question, if I dumped the liquid nourishment from above. The laughing abruptly stopped as the cloud above suddenly exploded to nothing, leaving behind a slightly irritated blood point flapping in place. Now hold on! I want to get something straight here! said Rainbow, slipping down as she was eye level with Sunset. Domineering persistent of the Pegasus held, the look of barely controlled fury in her features brought back memories of Sunset's early confrontations with the teen at Carolot High, back when Sunset was public enemy number one. Pegasus I make up roughly a third of Bully Jill. Even yet even though you and I have never met, you still knew it was me that was causing it ringing in your head? If you must know, I did know somehow instantly. Become aware that you decided to randomly dump weather on my head. But it seems so similar to what the other you once did to me, this seems to be the logical conclusion. The other me? Asked Rainbow. Now I need to give her wings a break, but not breaking eye contact. You mean the other Rainbow Dash that Twilight mentioned having met from wherever it is you ended up? Kuyen mas poder hacer hablando? replied Sunset, throwing forth every bit of Spanish she could remember. Along with observations she made tonight, when Rarity had become Spike's waifu. Given how similar Pinkie Pie and Applejack were between their human and pony versions, it was time to see if that applied to Rainbow as well. ¿Por qué estrellas hablamos de representante a Brunesto? It's a good thing I speak a little front. Little friends, otherwise my ability to learn how to speak Spanish would be dwindled by 30%, replied Rainbow without missing a beat. And since he realized what was going on. Hey, how did you... The other you is fluent in two languages. I just want to see how far that went, smirked Sunset. But now I'm curious as to why you're so fluent in Spanish. Clearly not expecting to have lost ground so quickly. Rainbow nervously looked around to see if any pony was listening. Fortunately for her, Twilight and Raspberry had long since gotten out of earshot. So, 
It was just her in Sunset on the outskirts of town. Sighing deeply, Rainbow knew there was no other choice. Look, I don't know what Spanish is, but Baroness, so I... Okay, I don't really know why I can speak that language so fluently. It's like I was born to be so awesome that being bilingual is part of the package deal. I don't really bring it up since I never really did talk to any point not fluent in Equest or whatever it is called in not your Equestrian world. English? Yeah, sure. English. Point is, I never really made a big deal of it. Since, uh, aside from letting me slide through some foreign language courses, it's mostly a useless ability. Even though it's basically what's been saving my ass in Spanish classes back at school. Not Sunset. Rainbow, not noticing Sunset's self smirking. So I took the conversation about her abilities in another direction. Hey, you said that you knew I spoke another language. Because the Rainbow Dash you're more familiar with does. That means she's also the most awesome athlete in her first year of Ponyville, right? Her? No, exactly. Is it the unicorn? Truth be told, I don't think she's ever lived in Ponyville. From what she's told me, she moved straight from Cloudsdale to Karen Lot. Rainbow looked at Sunset as he was an alien. Was, was it entirely incorrect in some respects? She lives in Karen Lot? Does that mean she's both rich and a total jerk? Or... Suddenly, Rainbow jumped to the air with glee. You're saying she's a Wonderbolt? Um, sort of. Since it cringed, it's becoming clear Rainbow had the same personality on the other side of the mirrors. Their secondary similarities weren't perfect. Carolina High's sport teams are called the Wonder Colts. Rainbow's on the soccer team. Oh, cool! Never heard of soccer, but I bet she's the best player they have. Flying and diving all over the place, making the opposite opposing players wish they could be as good as her. Soccer is a ground-based sport. There's no flying or anything on part of the players, clarified Sunset. Plus, the Rainbow Dash on the soccer team, she's not a Pegasus or any kind of winged creatures. Humans can't fly without assistance. Huh? Necessary to take moments, panting what she might have thought soccer was came to a abrupt halt. But if she's groundbound, then what she's actually doing when she plays that sport? She runs around chasing a white ball with black spots, trying to kick it to other players with her legs, and then every pony, including her, tries to kick the ball to the opposing team's net. Whosoever scores the most points wins. The right eye of the pace is in front sets and physically twitch. That sounds so very unawesome for any version of me to do. No need to clarify this, because I refuse to believe that whoever this other RD is can consider herself an athlete just because she can kick a ball. Since it just grown. Despite the fact that pursuing Raspberry Barrel at present was infeasible, it didn't make the reality of the situation any better. It's furying, here she was in Equestria to save the life of her suffering sister, and Susan found herself once again unable to continue her investigation. For a brief moment, the temptation to just storm into the forest after the witch presented itself. But Sunset forcefully reminded herself that she was on a tight leads. Celestia was watching. She's stronger than she looks. Princess Twilight's words found her way to Sunset's mind. All at once, she found herself calmer. It was thus that she resigned herself to another day with another of her friends' local counterparts. My dear Raspberry said Celestia. Are you quite all right? Huh? Oh, I'm fine. Replied Raspberry, though in a tone of the king it wasn't entirely true. It's just... Something bad happens to me every time I come here, ever since last nightmare night. Celestia had been waiting for the youngest, two youngest princesses at the Everfree Ruins. While it would have been simple enough to teleport to the mirror they were going to see, Celestia suggested they just walk there instead. Give her a chance to have a leisurely chat with Raz, who the Sun Princess wants to learn more about, both in terms of how she controlled dark magic without her mind being corrupted, just as an individual pony. That was only twice, you know. Both times involving the undead werewolf, whom you put an end to permanently. That's exactly what makes me so easy about coming back here, Raspberry answered. I did everything I fought against doing in order to finish that bitch once and for all. What are you talking about? 
Bai asked. The last time you were here, you saved all of Equestria. Only by repeating my actions to the lonesome dove nine years ago. That's why I sucked in a nervous breath. Right. This it puts everything about our recent return trip into perspective. Said so the purple alcorn. Well, on the bright side, all that nightmares crap you unintentionally did help every play out in the end, right? Yeah, I guess you could say that, shrugged Raspberry. Plus, my father was much more of a personal demon to me than Sabra ever could be. Don't get me wrong, I still hate the fact that I'm related to that psycho. But I've given a choice between the two. I picked Sabra over my father if it came to a conversation. At the very least, he wouldn't blame me for my mother's death. Indeed, unlike her hard son, Princess Obsidian Tim was satisfied with her state in life. By Celestia, though regrettably, she had much less of an influence over her only child's defensive disposition compared to his overbearing father, Prince Consort Golden Scepter. I don't remember you ever messing in Yosamara's father, pointing out Twilight. The sea and gem is barely in any history textbook concerning the period right before Queen Faust's departure from the throne, and only because she was, as you say, Samra's mother. Any reference to his father is not existent. As it should be, answered the eldest princess, her tone suddenly becoming much more cold and foreboding. Golden Scepter had decided the title of king belonged to him, and the time had come to dispose of my mother and restore the true unicorn monarchy. He claimed that the time of unification had come to an end, thus he was no longer needed. While he failed to carry out his assassination plans, it was only because his method of choice. A poison cup happened to go to his wife instead of the queen for attempted registrite and accidental equicide. Center was stripped of his tiles and banned to. Uh, hmm. I've forgotten where mom had sent that bastard. Regardless, his accents were also regarded so horrible, all traces of existence were to be erased as such as he never existed. I'm guessing Sabra didn't take any of that well. I can't say for certain, but a young stallion at the time who had just passed his stallionhood. However, the death of his mother and harsh punishment of his father most likely is what drove him into seeking power of dark magic. Of course, there was only rumor at the time, as there were rumors he also sought comfort in the forelegs of some unknown mare, who allegedly been in his presence. I never put much stock in the matter to be told. Given what kind of monster he was, especially after he left to take over the Crystal Empire, I'm, well, under the enduring legacy of that, aren't I? No. Your familiar connections to Sabra cannot be denied. But you have more than proven you are far more noble than Sabra ever was. Is that because he is actually of royal blood? inquired Twilight. Or because he publicly humiliated Prince Blueblood? Either or. Was all Celestia said in response, getting a good chuckle out of every pony present. Oh, come on! It's going to ask. I'll admit, still not sold on whatever she does being even remotely considered a sport, but how can she? I don't even. To be honest, she's still more successful in that regard than basically every pony else I know. She'll probably be making a living off of it, which is extremely hard to do for the average person. So Sam and Rainbow immediately decided to have lunch at the local restaurant called the Baron Mare. What such a felt would be a good name for something from those high fancy games Spike liked to play. It even had the same charming pub like quality in those type of areas, as the two mares sat dimly at the lit table surrounded by bar gores. But, but, Sword is like the hottest Pegasus alive as far as I'm concerned. Which means he's a total looker for whatever you keep back from. And the other me is only in an on-off relationship with him? Yep. Gah! Mon Rainbow, putting her face at the table onto the food. How can I be so non-committed like that? I got soaring now in a heartbeat if there was a chance in Tartarus, he said yes. But is that even a wonder bolt, you said? Wonder cult. And he's on the basketball team. Then he should be falling at her feet to ask her to be his mare friend. Uh, girlfriend. Whatever. And he should be saying yes. Because I don't know what basketball is, but it's probably lamer than soccer since I'm awesome. And any friends of me wouldn't choose the least awesomest sport there was. 
Sasha shook her head, arguing with Rainbow and virtually proving pointless. In a way, it was actually the kind of self criticism from one to another. I wonder if I should tell my Rainbow to ask about this. I wanted to see her go ahead strong about how another person or herself wants Soren so badly. Ugh, at least tell me she's the fastest, <laughs> whatever she is, is a good role model for whatever version of Skulu is, also in this horrible sounding place. Rainbow said, essentially looking for her drink. The fastest? Sunset had to raise an eyebrow at her. She knew Pegasus' ponies were capable of great speeds, but claiming to be THE fastest of them all? <laughs> was so much the trait of a bribery, it was so silly. Yes, THE fastest! <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not even remotely, nor does he have any interest in it, Sensei explained. The expression of mixed shock and horror on Rainbow's face made Sensei break into laughter. Getting for the differences between facial structures of humans and ponies, it was a perfect match for to Rainbow Dash's face, back when she discovered during the sleepover, her DVD of the Matrix Revolutions was in fact unreadable by the DVD player. Thank goodness for that! <laughs> Rainbow was practically begging once he was able to speak again. Please do not tell me the fastest in that other tent world is lightning dust. I don't even think I could live that down. Way to kill my human, Rainbow. Thought Sunset, knowing there was no way Dust could have known about what human lightning dust had done. Okay, it's not lightning dust. The less said about her, the better, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Since I'm betting she didn't get the reality check, the one I know went through. Raspberry Barrel didn't happen to be involved, was she? Sunset asked. So this is what, just what the reality check had been. Not exactly. What makes you... Oh, right. You've been going after her all week. Rainbow's showing you tones he had throughout the conversation fast. Raspberry Pegasus gave Sunset a look that was deadly serious. I don't know what beef with her is. I'm pretty sure you're not going to tell me. I'll tell you straight up. You wanna mess with her? You gonna mess with me. Got that? Yeah, yeah. The Applejack read me the riot act yesterday. Right before your sister and her friends accidentally set off a bomb trying to buck apples. Just like that. Rainbow's expression went from deadly secret to complete stupefaction. Scoo did what? Well, that explains why her mom came to me asking why she looked like she'd been at ground zero in an explosion. Sunset plots. Skulu's mother? Rainbow knows Sunset I reacting to the mention of Skulu's name. You know, like being out of the loop. Shimmer, if there's something I need to know about my adopted little Simmer, sister, and you're not telling me, you better tell me about it right now, so help me out! Sunset waved the four legs in front of her face, trying to ward off the rancored Rainbow. No, no, it's not about Skulu. Well, that's the one you know. You mean this other Skulu? <laughs> Sunset took a deep breath, reining herself for a long, difficult story. Yeah, you see, the one I'm more familiar with is your other self's adopted younger sister. Only that Skulu had a much different mother. Sunset proceeded to give the brief basics of what she had been told by Human Rainbow, about how Human Skulu's mother had basically come from a broken home, and how her providence had been fortunate that Rainbow's mother had found the abandoned baby only a few hours after her abandonment. How within a year, the parenting breaks had given to Rainbow's family, shortly before they moved away to Carolyn. So he even mentioned how Skulu's biological mother had tried to take her back several years later, and how Rainbow herself stood by her sister's side during that little reunion. A normally boisterous Rainbow, point first has sat there. Evidently, they just was he just heard. Ashley touched on that about how even though the story hadn't been Philly, this Rainbow knew. Stas was concerned about her sister all the same. Wow, it just. Wow, was Rainbow and Kamez. My Skulu. Obviously, she's not really adopted, but as part of a local Big Brother Big Sister program. <laughs> Didn't come from parents like that. Flower Shower and Slipstream. They love Skulu, but RRL usually because of their jobs as trainers for local wise weather teams. The fact he willingly really, really entrusts her to my care, plus the fact. I really do think of her as the little sister I never had. It's rough hearing about any kind of scoots being treated badly. More often than not, I worry not doing enough by her as a foster sister, you know? Yeah, replied Sunset. 
But there was no way she was going to let anybody other than Twilight and the other princesses know just how herself was in a similar position to Rainbow as a foster sister. Or how there was an entire reason she came back to Equestria in the first place. Just then, a pale lavender pegasus with cornflower hair came in and about something. Yes, there you are. We've been looking all over for you. Oh, what's up, Cloud Chaser? It's another public storm coming in. Apparently those goofballs at Cloud City Weather Factory sits two months in our re direction. Rainbow face stuff. Again? Go ahead, Sailor, about this. It's the third time this happened this month. Justin starts and said, Hey, I gotta take care of this, but I'll pay for once. Yes, Twilight was right about you, Sunset. You are what she originally described you as. Uh, thanks. The bloody Sunset. Slightly confused, but happy to love a good impression all the same. But, added Rainbow, don't go after Raz like she's your enemy. She wouldn't hurt a fly if she could avoid it. So, whatever your deal is, Liz, use words to solve it, not violence. Er, uh, sure thing. However, Sunset wasn't about to let go of her suspicions about Raspberry. Not when she still messed the description of the evil presence Twilight described as the one hurting her dreams. Even so, she thought, every pony I've spoken to thus far had vows for Raspberry. Might do to visit the other two members of Twilight's little group. If Raspberry hadn't gotten to flesh to rarity, this must have something I could use against her. And once I have Prusy's torturing Twilight, I'll take the dark bitch out of her myself. Oh, by the way, considering that he does wrote that Skidaloo's parents weren't always there and that they were busy and always had to train and all that. If I look in the comments section and I see anybody from a certain forum group complimenting this idea, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs>